Hey everyone. Now, over the years I've shown various aspects of my network, but um, my network's not exactly a standard one that many people would have because I am a network engineer, so I've got mine pretty much fine-tuned. So what I'm going to do today is go up to old mate's house up the street, who's just an average guy, not a network engineer, but he's got a lot of stuff on his network. So I'm just going to have a look at his network, which might represent a more typical network that people have got out there. So I'm just going to go up there and see what I can find. Right, as I walk up to the house, I see already he's got some sort of camera set up going on here. Now we've got, looks like the doorbell, one of those ring things. So he's into that. See if I can hear it. Hardly. Shit doorbell and a couple of cameras. We'll check this out. Thanks for stopping by. If you'd like to leave a message, you can do it now. That would fucking annoy me. Could try this method. Protected by a ring. See, if you had a bigger doorbell, he might have heard that. I just rang him and he said the door's unlocked. So, yep, security plus. Say exactly what you I just said. I didn't hear the doorbell ring. You didn't hear the doorbell <laughs> ring. Let's address that first, shall we? <laughs> All right, now this is the reason he didn't hear the doorbell, because that squats to piss. So, you know, that's what we've got to deal with. First thing he needs is a decent doorbell. Now, first things first, what the hell is this? Is that what I think it is? What is that? What's this thing? That's Alexa. And why have you got that? For what reason do you have this thing? What does it do? Home automation. Home automation. Okay, we'll have a look at that. That's obviously something I would never have. Jesus, right next to the knives. That's where it should be, so you can <laughs> get, get the shits and stab it. All right. You've got to show me this stuff. Yeah, okay. Is so, this? Yep, the kettle. That's a kettle. So that's hooked up to Alexa. Right. Why? Because I refuse to get up to boil the kettle and press the button. So that's why not as good looking as me. So how do you how do you turn it on then? Go on then. Alexa, turn kettle on. That thing just made a noise. I'm gonna turn the fucking dining room light on. Alexa, what? That turned the dining room light on. <laughs> Does it not know the difference between a light? Alexa, turn kettle on. There you go. Yeah. Second time lucky. That took more effort than I take to flip the switch. <laughs> All right, so we've got, so does that mean the kettle's, what, wireless? Um, Can I turn it off? Is that the button that's yeah. off? Yeah. So that's hooked up on the network, obviously. Yep. Okay, where's your access point? All right, so we've got the ubiquity thing right next to the air con. Oh, yeah. How many of them have you got? Just the one access point in the whole house. All right, and what's this? Is this? So and that's networking? The, yep, so in behind there is a control 4 adapter which hooks up to our, um, our, our network. Control 4 adapter for that, so what's this? So that's um, advantage, yeah, that just controls the zones. That's not hooked up. So okay. That's not hooked up to the network. Yep. Well it is, yeah, no it's not. Okay, but that one is via something behind it? Yep, control 4 adapter. Control 4, yeah, okay, we'll get to that. So what's this? So Dyson. So that's hooked up through the cloud, through the Dyson app. Then the Dyson app hooks up to Alexa through the cloud. Meaning what? What can you do? I can turn it on and off. And it adjusts speeds. Yeah. How? Um, just by talking to Alexa. And that's this thing? Yep. All right. So, show me. Alexa, ask Dyson to start purifying. <laughs> It sounded like you had to ask permission. Your purifier is already on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently it's already on. Is it's it? on auto. But it's off. No, it's on auto. Staying. Alexa, ask Dyson to stop purifying. <laughs> so you're asking this to ask that. You should be telling it. All right, so what's this thing? That's the baby monitor. <laughs> baby monitor. That's not hooked up. That's just RF. Okay, so it's RF but not Wi-Fi. That's correct. Okay, we'll have a look at that too. Baby monitor, right? Because right. that's obviously a baby in the background. You can probably hear in, in there. All right, we'll have a look at that too. What else you got? So he's even got a piano that's not as big as mine. This bloke. Yes. <laughs> Pick it on him. <laughs> How do you turn the lights on? You have to press the switch. Where? Do you mean this thing? Yes. An actual, oh, look at that. That was way quicker than Alexa. I know. 
nice. So what do you got here making all this noise? That's just the cooling fans. I can turn them off by Alexa. Show me. Alexa, turn cooling fans off. Another Alexa thing. I don't like the look of this. So you're, you had another one over here. Yep. Cooling fan. Which, if I remember right, controls this TP-Link thing down here. Correct. Like the TP-Links I've got at home. Yep. Okay. Now I'll just move this Raspberry Pi that I lent him, because as you can see, he's unhooked it, because he's scared, and he prefers Alexa. So what have you got? What have you got here? What is all this? All right. Point. What's what? What's rattling away, by the way? That's just those things. So, obviously, that's the, the main control board there. Control board for what? For control four. And that's what your aircon yep. connected to, right? Yep. So there's my switch. Right. That's just the amp that um, yeah uh, controls it. And this here is a HDMI switch for control four. So all that right. switches the HDMI, like all the different HDMI channels, into the amp. What's that little thing down there? So that's just a um, button for the power board that's behind that, which controls all that. A USB? Oh, Jesus. Okay. Is that anything special or just an ornament? Uh, no, that is something special. So that's an RF transmitter. For what? So that transmits... <laughs> oh, oh, what's the baby doing? What's it do? Um, that controls the... What does it control? I feel like one of the controls there. Yeah. Oh, the fan. The, fan. So, yeah. the RF control fan. So, yeah. Okay. IR. Sorry, IR. Oh, for red. Well, how's that work through the cupboard? Oh, know. it doesn't. There's no door in here, is it? No. Okay, so you've got a switch. Tell me about this switch. That's just what's hooked up to that. So, you that know, you yeah, it hooks up. Yeah, just the yeah, cat six to each room. Um, yeah, the TVs, etc. Okay. So, your access point that you had in the hallway, that must come to this too, does it? Yep. Through the and where's yeah, your actual through. router? Uh-huh, come inside. Okay, so <coughs> this is your router. Yep. So that phone line would be your connection out to the world. Yep. And so what's it we you got a few things plugged in. Have you just got something local plugged in and then off to um, the switch? Yeah, so that's local computer. Yep. That's the aircon. Um, okay. That's oh, sorry, yeah, that one there is obviously NBN in and that one there goes to the switch. So that's the one that goes down back through the wall over the switch. Yep. And this one here goes to the... Somewhere else. Somewhere else. Okay, so you've got a home phone as well, do you? Plugged in? Yep. Okay. That's a fax. Is it no... Oh, fax. Jesus. Okay. Well, it's just a home phone. I use it as a fax every now and then. Okay. All right, so that's the standard... Um, that's a Telstra box, isn't it? Yep. That they give out. And obviously, I just saw your Wi-Fi's turned off on this because you're yep. doing that from the other thing. Access point, correct. Yep. Okay, so... These are the things I don't have. So that's equivalent to a Raspberry Pi that I've got and a little SFP in my switch, yeah. which I'll get back to. Okay, so that's the layout. We should have a look at this from a logical point of view. What's but basically, um, yeah, the way control four it's works. It's got an infrared thing somewhere. Well, it's got that, oh, okay. but it's, it's, there's another box behind here that's control four kit. Right. So the Cat6 comes out of the switch into the control four box, which then transmits will translate it to an IR, yep. the little IR cord to the IR receiver, yep. or the um, yeah, HDMI plug out of that. So there's a little box. But why, actually, to do what? Like, when do you use what? that? What do you use that for? So for the Control 4 app, so you can control, like, turn any TV on or off, change channels the way you, way you want. But would, wouldn't you be in show? here if you were going to do that? Like, if mm. you were in here watching one channel and you want to change another channel, wouldn't you? remote. You need a remote, so how do you TV, do it then? You remote to that TV, so you just pull out your phone and one phone controls all. It's well, probably easier to show you. Alright, let's have a look at the phone. What happens if you turn the kettle on and there's no water in? Um, the kettle kills itself. The kettle kills itself? Yeah. Oh, it will turn itself off, will it? No. Or it's not, it so, it's not, so there's nothing smart whatsoever about it, obviously. No. I see. You better hope there's water in when you turn it on then. <laughs> Alright, so what app is this? Alright, so this is the Control 4 app which controls basically the home. So from the menu, I can select my different rooms. So the media room, which right. we, um, was in before, which had the switch in it. Right. The living room, which is our main room behind us, which can, um, yeah, controls obviously um, both the TV and the thermostat. 
Yeah. The master bedroom, which is out. Oh, I know that one, yeah. Yeah, you, you've yeah. been there a few times. <laughs> oh, watch, watch, watch. Have you and, wondered that when you yeah. come home and suddenly your phone's getting ads for like bondage gear because Alexa heard something? <laughs> Alexa hears everything. Oh, and then the spare bedroom, which is what the one we were just in. Right. So that's where a lot of that Cat 6 cabling goes from the actual control for main board to the actual con um, control for receiver in each of the rooms. So if we take the living room, for example, um, we can turn the, t oh, let's do the ma ma uh, media room actually. Um, so in the media room, we can turn the TV, TV on. Now, before I turn the TV on, it goes to another menu which um, allows me to select a number of different devices, which I can receive in any one of the rooms that I just went through. Right. So I've got two Foxtel boxes, which allows me to, to multi-view. Right. And the Blu-ray player. Uh, which is just a standard LG um, <laughs> Blu-ray, Blu-ray, yeah. um, WD TV, which I don't know. Oh, really little media box things. Yeah, yeah, media box things. I don't use it anymore. Yeah, yeah. the Xbox One, uh, which is what I use for a lot of my streaming, including um, Amazon Prime and also YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, there's a port at the front of the amp, which we looked at before, which I can plug any um, yeah, HDMI yeah, okay. into. So, but, but okay, yeah. I need to go through all of them. But yeah. what generally are you selecting here? So typically, so you, you I'd see the TV the, yeah, in this room. So, so now the TV in that room will be on, yeah. and I can use that as a as a remote. So the advantage of having the Control Four is that it allows us to have one remote for any room for any device. Okay. So everything else you control through that silly thing over there that you speak to, uh, otherwise known as Alexa. Fuck. <laughs> see what just popped? Oh, it's just something else. Oh, right. So. That oh, sounds good. Oh, I'm surprised you heard that doorbell. It's <laughs> not much of a doorbell. So what Alexa does is has skills, and each one of skills. Yeah, each one of those skills um, is within within Alexa, and it requires, I guess, a login for the Dyson app and the Dyson Cloud for Alexa to use, a login for the Ring app, right, um, for Alexa to use. What does the Ring app do? That was your doorbell, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. So and what can you do with that? So if I go under the Ring app. Mate, that's good. Do it again. Okay. So what's that? That's front door. Yeah. So we go to the front door. There you go. Now I notice you've got a couple of cameras out the front too. Yep. So that's the swan out. Hang on, something's come up. So... So those cameras don't do much unless you specifically go looking for them. That's right, yep. Okay, what's this cop over the road? There's the posting. That doesn't work, you said? It doesn't work. Okay. So, um, this one up we've turned through. The My Air app, which controls the zones, which I showed you, uh, we looked at before. To do... So that was one of the um, Cat6 cables in the back of the router. So this stuff here, I'm going to assume, is connected out on the internet, so when you're, let me guess, anywhere, you can set the stuff. Is that right? De is yeah, depending. This? Yeah, and yeah, this is local, so I can't oh. I can't do this out in the real world. Um, but the Control Four app has a cloud, which I can then allows me to turn thermostat on, turn thermostat off. Obviously, American, so it's called a thermostat. Jesus, all right. Um, so you spend a lot of time on apps. Yeah. So what's actually automatic here? What when you say home automation? What's actually automated? That's a great point. <laughs> this, because this, quite frankly, is remote control. Yeah. It's not automation. That's right. You've seen my house. Exactly. I've got if automation. I walk in, the uh, air, condition, air conditioner doesn't turn on, and then, you know, lights turn on and off. I have right. to tell something to do something. Yeah, see, that's not automation. No, that's remote and control. The next question is, what happens if your internet's down? Oh, I'm it's fucked. game over for all, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, now I'm going to have a look at this from an RF perspective, network perspective. Got the Wi Spy, got some capture devices, got my wiretap, got a hack RF. So I'll hook some of this up and see what's going on on the logical level. All right, I don't have my screen capture working, so I'm going to go ghetto and um, just point the camera at the screen. But you can see I've got a Wi Spy plugged in just looking at um, 2.4 gig at the moment. And 
you can see there's a lot of stuff on channel 6 and some stuff on channel 1 but this is that's why I can tell that's Wi-Fi just by the pattern of it but um, he's got some stuff here that's non 802.11 so I'm going to see if any of that comes up so this baby monitor what does it do? Does it look like a TV screen or something? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so some pictures come up. Now, hang on. Put that there and we can need to see your bloody bed, man. That's right. Oh, actually, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Hang on. Anyway, you'd have to move it. That's no, alright, sorry, sorry. Alright, so I can see there's now extra activity come across here. So, is that on? No. Turn it on. I also noticed there's some high duty cycle stuff over here. And I also noticed channel 11 just started. Mm. So, can you turn that off? Off. Okay, it's just turned it off. And what I actually noticed there is this channel 11 just started not long after we turned that on. So, I'm wondering if something's just swapped channels because it saw that interference and said, hey, I'll go to a different channel. Or, you could be that channel 11 using it, because if you turn that back on, that channel 11 seemed to come on, or seemed to be on when you had that on. So I might have to investigate that a little bit further, and see what's actually transmitting. Could also just be a lot of data that happened on channel 11 just then. Okay, so we have, when he's turned it on, there's activity here now. It just looks like a, a different, there's your 1, 6 and 11 channels, and it looks like channel, I don't know, 9 or something. Are you sure that's not Wi-Fi? Oh, I'll have a look, don't worry about it, I'll have a look in the look. So you turn that off, and that'll disappear. Yeah, so the traffic's disappeared when he's turned that off. So I'll have a closer look at that, but it's it's not a, on a set band, so it could be Wi-Fi, and it sort of looks like it at a glance, um, and it's just picked a non-16 or 11 channel when he had that on. So that's something that's not good, because you'd like all your stuff to be on 1, 6 or 11, because in, the, in between here it interferes with things on channel 6 and 11, but, you know, we're just sussing out what's here. I find this um, interesting too. You've got wideband interference, and that, that thing's off. That's old news. You've still got this massive wideband interference, which you know, microwaves sometimes look like that, but you've got something here that's going right across the 2.4 gig. So it's interesting. But no one really looks at RF. No one even looks at layer 2 for MAC address stuff. But when you start looking, you start finding. Okay, this is his router, and on the switch here, the switch part of it, which is these ports, one of them goes to his other switch which is what his AP, he said, plugs into. So I'm going to find which one goes to that other switch and tap into that and see what's actually going through this network. Now to do that, I'm going to pull the cable out and put it through my um, wire tap here. So what that does, as I've been through before, it gets the, um, the receive line off each direction and then I can put them into their own network device here and then capture that on Wireshark. And I'll just run that capture for a little bit and analyse it when I get back home in the comfort of my own computer. Right, so this is the through. So I've just got to put these two in line with where that connector is. Now obviously that won't work, which is why I've got one of those. So what I'm going to do is just tap that into where his switch one is. Alright, so he reckons it's the black one, which means your whole house network is going to die for a moment. Plug that in, plug that back in there, and hope a link comes back up. Alright, so at this end I want to capture that. So, just going to set up these two adapters, plug them in, okay. and then plug these into the receive that gets tapped off that, that line. That's right, so down here, put them there which gets to receive off one of them, and the other one which gets to receive off the other, and I'll combine them on the computer. So as I said, I know there's no um, screen capture here, but I'll go through it at home anyway. So you can see my two adapters here, that one and that one. And if I start the capture from them, you can see all the crap going through his network. Well, all the stuff from the upper switch anyway. 
So what I'll do is I'll just leave that running for five or 10 minutes, get them to do a couple of things, and we'll just get an idea of the network behavior. Oh, so while that's doing that, what's this thing? That just controls the RF on that. RF on what? On the skylight. The skylight now. Holy shit. So yeah. Oh, that's just a remote control, like yeah. I have for my yeah. lines kind of thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Works. What's all this? Is this all hooked up as well? Just so yes, yeah. Uh, well, that's hooked up. So that's um, so that's a Wi-Fi device with some app, no doubt. Yeah, correct. But Don't you've got it app. connected to your little spy device, my little Alexa. App. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And so is that. Yep. And that's a gas cooker, not induction. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have one of those. <laughs> I just spotted something <laughs> under here. That's my backup. What's this business? So that's just a um, WD um, hard drive backup. So oh, it's the backup. Ah, yeah. so you don't back up to the cloud. No, I not. Okay, he's got something yeah. right. The man's got something <laughs> right. Um, backup hard. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. You keep your backup local, not yeah. somewhat of a far away land. Yeah. Now, are those cameras out the front of the house wireless? Are they Wi-Fi? Yes. Okay. How are they going? Slow. They're struggling. Is that normal? Yeah, they do struggle. They're usually struggling. Oh, they have Jesus. That did struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll have a look at that um, in the capture as well and see if we see anything, because no doubt that would have gone through some sort of cloud business. Mm. Ah. All right. Yeah, we'll struggle to... Okay, see, see that in itself is the delay. Did you see the delay I had in that light switch when I turned on the lounge light? There was no delay. I hit the switch and it turned on. Yeah. Smart, aren't you? <laughs> See, that's the way. Original on best. Couldn't help but notice you got a digital radio. Does this actually work around here? Uh, not really. Oh. So it, it picks up some stuff. Welcome to Dad. Because you know, like, you've seen how I do it from the yeah. um, SDR tuner. Yeah, it's not working today. Because normally that radio comes up straight away. Yeah, I couldn't imagine the reception being too no. good in here. Okay, well that's that. Alright, I've done about five, five to ten minutes of capture, so I'll just stop that, save it, and have a look when I get home. Now, this obviously is a wired capture, I'm not going to bother with any wireless capture today. Plug his network back in, move my tap, and um, so he can keep doing his thing again. And hopefully that'll come back up. Okay, so here's the packet capture. Straight away you can see there's a lot of IP version 6. Uh, that's because it uses Telstra and they provide IP version 6, whereas my home network uses a different provider that doesn't have that. But anyway, that's that. So you can see, well, let's have a quick browse through, bits of random stuff, Ooh, some UDP in there, lots of it, TCP, this and that. So the first thing I'm going to look at is see what he's been accessing. So just, just DNS for the domain name lookup. Now you see there's um, queries and responses. I'll, I'll just go to one that's a query itself, like uh, something here, and just filter by that just so we can just see the queries, just to see the names, to make it easier. So I don't know off by heart the filter for Wireshark for everything, but you just go to the, the part that defines it as a query and just make that the filter and it'll come up. So you can see as expected, he's got Amazon everywhere, Google, uh, Broadlink, I'll have a look at them. Uh, Amazon, Amazon, Broadlink. Um, some stuff local on his network here, like his, I just saw printed, didn't I? No, yeah, LaserJet. Uh, what else? Amazon, Amazon and Netflix comes up a lot through this. Oh, I just saw some Philips somewhere. It, Philips Hue, so that's some of his so-called smart lighting. Um, Samsung Cloud, everything Cloud. So this broadlink.com.china, is uh, something that comes up in here. So I'll have a look at what that is. So just for the hell of it, I'll go to that uh, broadlink.com.cn and see what, if anything comes up. And look at that, Chinese. So that's, that's what that is. Now you can see the address that it went to was Broadlink, but if I have a look at the OUI and the MAC address, you can see the vendor is this hangs out thing. So if I look that up instead, right now I've got an English site here from Alibaba. Um, with Hangzhou Broadlink put together. And basically Hangzhou, blah, 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 electronics, 
um, is specialized in provision of smart home products and services, combining advanced technologies of IoT, cloud computing, big data analysis. Don't you love that? And AI. AI. Ruling paves the way to internet platforms, blah, 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 blah. So, okay, that's basically his stuff, sending his info to China, as we expected. And the rest would be sending it to America. So Amazon and, and Netflix and all that. So that's DNS, just a quick look at DNS. Okay, so for other stuff, we've got all this um, TLS stuff here, which is um, encrypted. So at the start of that, there should be a certificate from from the server. Now, I'd have to find a session that, that includes that, or I could use a filter. So TLS handshake type is 11. That'll show me um, the ones that are certificates. So you can see all these certificates here. And what I can do is drill down into it to find the actual certificate. So down here in the subject, you've got all the subjects of the certificate here. Country name, career, of course, Samsung Electronics. I'll just go to the name. Um, let's have a look. Okay, that there. I want to make this easier to read on the others. So I'll just right click that and apply it as a column. Sort the columns out. So at a glance, you can see some of the things it's going to. The California Mountain View, uh, Amazon, TP-Link, Kowloon, that'll be Hong Kong, and some others. So we've got uh, Microsoft, all the ones you'd expect. So that's what this that's what this whole house is talking to. So that's how to see the certificates. I'll just take that out now. Okay, so what unencrypted stuff pops out? Well, let's have a look at HTTP. Um, here's some here. Technical modem. Okay, his modem's just talking to something else, which happened to be his control four. So what that would be, his control four asked the modem all about itself, or his modem router, and then it replied with all this stuff saying what it is, what it's capable of, and all that sort of thing. So this, this message is getting around his own house, which is, I guess that's okay. What I can do is go to it, similar to how I filtered before, just go to an HTTP GET method and just use that as the filter so we can see any HTTP GET requests throughout the whole capture. So we saw these here that go to the, the router, his dot one address, things asking for the description of it. Uh, we've got something going to um, Kindle. And we also have this um, Microsoft NCSI, which is Network Connection Status Indicator. So that'll be things trying to use that as an address, as a check to see if they can get to the internet. So what I can do is just copy that um, value, put that in here and see what happens. So it gets a response. That's all that would be. That's all that would have got passed back. There's the source. It's just a very simple thing to see if it's got internet connectivity. And there's ones for different vendors too. They've all got something similar that they'll use to go and check to see if they've got actual outside world connectivity okay so there's a lot of that sort of thing so if i go to ip address uh, 12.168.0.156 which was this philips hue thing see what that's doing um, it's sending out stuff just a little uh, multicast locally so systems like that hang on let me just follow that uh, stream systems like that can advertise to other ones around what's going on what it what it has what it does it's also doing UPnP, which busts holes through your firewall, which of course isn't good because it lets connections go that you might not necessarily want coming into your network. Um, but all this stuff does it. The point there is people have got this stuff on their network that firstly connects to everywhere else in the world, which means they have a connection into your network back through their device because you don't really know what their device is doing. And also it busts holes through your firewall here with UPnP, which I don't use on my network, of course. Um, but people aren't aware. They just plug it in and, and say, oh, it lights up. But, you know, there's all this stuff going on the network that I wouldn't call particularly fantastic or necessary. So by having these motion sensors go to a Raspberry Pi, I can set up um, message queuing from that to Home Assistant to act upon any movement, however I see fit. One of the examples of that is the hallway light. So you can just see as I um, pass the hallway here, the light for the computer room turned on. But there's actually an extra condition that it, it'll only turn on if the computer's actually on, which it is. And it determines that by measuring the current going through the um, power point where the computer's plugged in. So there's the power meter. So if those conditions are met, 
Basically, if there's motion in the hallway, if it's after sunset, and if this is drawing more than half an amp, meaning the computer's on, then turn these front room lights on if I go down the hallway. If not, then I must be going to the bedroom up this end, so turn that lamp on instead. Another example of automation is you can be walking to the bed and the lights just come on. <laughs> now that may look sus, but there's actually a, a legitimate uh, reason for that. You want red lights in the bedroom coming on automatically because white ones are just blind you. So it's just a nice soft light that comes on automatically. <laughs> Another example is the pond pump that I've got here, which turns off at sunset uh, daily. And of course sunset changes its time every day, so that changes accordingly. Again, that's just something that's automatic. Another example I've got is the doorbell, a real doorbell, so that when someone presses it, automatically the light comes on and that stays on for a minute, then automatically turns off. Again, proper home automation, except of course someone has to press the button, obviously. Now in the lounge, I've got my projector set up um, running Cody so I can watch movies out here on the screen. And I've got another automation so that when the actual video starts, the, the lights near the piano turn off. And when the video stops, those lights turn on. So again, automatically. Okay, so there you have it. There's some examples of what an average person might put in their home with all this smart connected stuff and what it's actually doing. And then what I'm actually doing here from a, a nerdier point of view. And I wanted to make the distinction between remote control and automation okay so he's got remote control he can control this stuff but I can actually automate mine and another big difference is I could pull my internet connection out and all of this would still work just fine because my, my control and information is all within the house and I'll put a link to um, a good write-up from the guys at home assistant when you install it it has a um, an overview of their philosophy and it's pretty much how I see it as well as how it should be so I'll put a link into that and you can have a read of that and you might enjoy it too but anyway That'll do for now. Until next time, take it easy.